In this video, I'm sharing with you how to build these chicken tractors for about 50 bucks a piece. Now I have two of them. They're 40 square feet each, five feet wide, eight feet long. I keep a couple roosters in each one as kind of our bachelor pad. Uh, they've got a tarp that covers half of it for shade. It's open. We can move them daily in order to uh, give them fresh grass. And then they are protected from the sun and rain when it rains. This is the first one I built. It was the practice. It was the trial. Uh, it went okay. This is the second one we built. It went a lot better. In this video, I'm showing you how I built this. Come on. All right, so I learned this on YouTube. I watched someone's video recently. I don't recall who it was that had this video out there, but I wanted to try my hand at it and uh, I ended up building one for a couple of my roosters. We have um, our main rooster, Silver Dollar, and then we have some spare roosters in case anything happens to Silver Dollar. All right, so for this project, you have three pieces of wood. You should only need to make one single cut, and that is on this 10 foot two by six. Uh, let's go over the prices real quick. Currently, wood prices are the lowest they've been in, in probably the past year and a half, two years. Uh, super low, the two by six by 10, pressure treated, $12, and then we have two two by six by eights. Those are $8 a piece, $7.95 or $7.98 uh, at Lowe's. That's where I picked these up. Wood prices are really good. So that's why I decided to take on this project. We've also got some chicken wire here, 24 inches high by 50 feet long. This should do two tractors, uh, but there should be plenty of chicken wire here for what we're doing. Uh, so let's get to cutting. We're only making one single cut for this project. And that is on the two by six by 10. Basically the dimensions of this chicken tractor, this little chicken coop is uh, eight feet long, five feet wide. Super easy, very simple. So we are hitting right here. We're gonna make one cut and then uh, start assembling. The last time I built one of these, it took me uh, maybe an hour, hour and 20 minutes. I think it can be done faster depending on what type of materials you're using. <laughs> one cut and we're off to the races. So for this, we need a solid right angle. What I'm doing is I'm putting the eight foot section on the outside and I'm putting the five foot section on the inside. And the one thing I'm doing here is I'm leaving this center point um, open because we're going to drill a pilot hole and we're gonna drive a lag screw into this for stability's sake while we're pulling it and towing it around. Now there is one thing that would cause this to cost a little bit more and that would be the material we're using as a hoop. So the material that I'll be using for the hoop section uh, to give its curvature is um, field fencing. It's four feet tall and it's very structurally sound, albeit difficult to deal with. And I'll show you that in a second. Yo, can you guys literally chill out just a little bit? Relax for a minute. All right, so this is the footprint, eight by five, 40 square feet, enough for two roosters, maybe a rooster and some hens, or several pullets. All right, so these are the lag screws that I'm using. I believe they're five eighths by four inches. So I'm going to use this drill bit, five eighths drill bit. I'm gonna put a center hole there, and then I'm going to drive these in. And I have these little carabiners. I found these uh, on the side of the road. I, I stopped and picked up some, some scrap stuff and these were in a, there's like 10 of them in a, in a big bag. So I'm using a couple for this tractor. I used a couple for the other one. And this is just an easier way sort of to attach something and pull it. Um, you can attach like a ratchet strap or whatever and just kind of pull this thing around. Um, so that's what we're gonna do right now. The head on this lag screw is 9 16 just the one I chose I'm using a deep socket because I don't know where my Normal socket is. Here we go. Aha, I have this little adapter here so that I can actually attach this to the driver like that and drive this in much faster. Give this a little bit of wiggle room so it doesn't put much strain on it. There we go, awesome. Let's head over to the other side. All right, so now that that's done, it is time to get our hoop wire and cut the hoop wire and attach it. This is what I was talking about. This is field fencing. 
They're giant, like six by six squares. The metal's not welded, it's wrapped with these little pieces of other metals. It's not, um, it's bendable, it's pliable, it's malleable. You can move things around, detach things, attach things. But the problem with that is these little things slide up and down the metal upon which they are attached. I've had this roll for the past six years or so, and this is the first good thing that we could think of to do with it, other than use it as fencing around our garden. It's not very effective fencing around our garden because giant holes that rabbits can just go right through. Uh, it's only four feet tall, so deer can just hop right over. There's really no point in using it as fencing for our garden. That's why we're using it for this project. If I were going to need to go out and buy wire for this project, I would do one of two things. I would either buy chicken wire and build a frame out of two by four, so a square frame, and then chicken wire that, which is a good plan, probably just as sturdy. The other thing I would consider doing is buying a two by four welded wire. Welded wire is like what you can use like as a dog fence, normally staple welded wire to uh, fence posts and uh, welded wire. The two by four welded wire is not as sturdy as this wire. However, it would provide enough structure to make that five foot arch across the footprint of this tractor. Come here, friends. Where are you going? What's up, buddy? For this part of the project, we need metal snips. This is uh, These are sheet metal cutters. I don't know what else to use. Like, I guess you could use bolt cutters. I don't have bolt cutters. So these plus a significant amount of force actually do the trick. All right, this is line 17, cutting right beyond it. So there's a reason we chose an eight foot long chicken tractor. The height of this is four feet tall. So two of them next to each other, four plus four equals eight. Boom, I know math. So that's the reason we did this. If we wanted a 12 foot tractor, we would have bought two 12 foot two by sixes and then just used three sections of this. For this next part, I screwed up on my first project because I bought these uh, poultry net staples, which are great if you're just using poultry netting. I needed fence staples, which are, they're a, a larger gauge and they're longer. I did not buy the ones that I should have bought. However, these are, they're, they're fine. We have a trusty hammer. All right, in order to hold this thing up, I'm gonna tack a screw just so it stays upright for a few moments. We have the entire fencing put on the frame. We still need to cut a door, cover the whole thing in chicken wire, and then put the tarp on. So making this door, what I did last time that worked out really well is I cut out the section that I want to use. Let's say the door is gonna be, you know, these little bit here, across, down. So it'll be this whole section. What I'll do is I'll cut this out, bend these wires back to provide stability so this doesn't slide back and forth on, on that wire. And then I'll take that section over there and go cut out a piece larger than what I have taken off of here. And then I'll use some scrap wire to make hinges on it and then uh, swing it down. We make a little clasp to sort of swing out and grab the door on both sides and it ends up being really, really sturdy and secure. This is how I secured the top here. If you can see where I cut the edge of this front off, I just took these wires and I just left enough wire left to sort of wrap around and I've done that over the entire, all the sides. It's very secure. All right, so let's make that door. All right, and just like that, we are finished. One thing I forgot to include when I was talking about price is the tarp. That's a, I think eight bucks, seven or eight bucks for a medium duty tarp at Walmart. This is not a great quality tarp, so that's gonna have to get replaced. They have a much better selection of, we'll say higher quality tarp at Harbor Freight, but Harbor Freight is not anywhere around me. It's quite a ways away. So Walmart had to suffice for now. Chicken wire, this is two inch holes, chicken wire over the fencing. Going forward, if I do any more of these chicken tractors, I'm 100% 
going to buy the roll of 2x4 welded wire and use that so that there's no need to chicken wire anything. Chicken wire is such a pain in the neck. At least for the, the next chicken tractor, it's just going to be welded wire. Here's our giant door. Probably built this door too big. Here it is. Uh, so right here we have this little latch. You kind of undo that. And then on this side, you've got one going the opposite direction. So they have to be they have to be unhooked in opposite directions. That's what holds the door shut. It's just built on hinges up here. I did not chicken wire that top part. I'm not worried about it. Inside, plenty of space for shade and to keep their food dry. Only two roosters are going in here right now. So this is it. Super easy to build. This one took too long for me to build today. Definitely more than an hour because uh, of the chicken wire. The chicken wire was just such a, a nuisance. There were a few things that I had in my stock of inventory already that I did not have to worry about buying. So that helped cut down on the cost. Some of that would be these tiny little zip ties. These are great for attaching the chicken wire to this. Well, I put them all over the place. They're everywhere. Uh, I got those for free, believe it or not, on the side of the road. But if you need any of the supplies here, definitely check the description for links to all the items that we use today. I'm gonna go grab those two roosters and put them in here and then clean up my mess. And that'll be a wrap. Hey, I want to say thank you for joining in on this video. Uh, I hope this video served you. And I hope, if for nothing more, that it just gave you an idea, sparked an idea about how to build a chicken tractor, chicken coop, a little bit easier. And I'll see you on the next video.